Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to use Excel to do some common math functions. For example, the absolute value function. Raising a number, uh, raising e to a number, taking the square root, logs, factorials, how to get pi, and so forth. These are things that as more courses are transitioning to using computers instead of calculators, scientific and graphing calculators, students come to Excel without the language, without the basic functionality to perform these tasks. So as, you know, as an introduction so that you can make the transition smooth, I'm making this video and hopefully you can retain something from it and start using Excel more and less uh, handheld calculator. Um, okay, so let's jump right in. I chose a couple really common ones that will come up in your math and stats courses and will be useful in just uh, being able to jump right in and not have to go searching all over the web for these. So the first one is the absolute function, right? The function is equals ABS and whatever you want to put those absolute signs around you would put inside these parentheses, okay? So how does this look as far as notation and math? Well, it, that's those two straight lines and anything inside here let's say a equals the positive version of that right so if this was negative a it would also equal a so basically it makes anything inside these lines positive without getting into too much of the math because actually it's taking it's squaring a whatever a is even if it's negative and then taking the square root is getting you always a positive result. Okay, but without getting too much into the math, we can do a couple tests. We can take the absolute value of a couple numbers. Let's say 5, negative 5, 1, negative 0.5. Okay, let's do that right here. Equals ABS, open parentheses, and refer to the cell with the number, or you could type five directly into here. But it's better practice to start learning how to refer to cells. Close that and of course it just makes five positive five which is already positive five. More interestingly negative five becomes positive five and one stays one and negative point five becomes positive point five. So you see all it's doing is it's making whatever's in its parentheses positive. Okay? So this is a useful next one is the exponential uh, function. So, equals exp. This is that little e that we do when we do e raised to some number. Right? So e squared, e to the third power, and so forth can be performed with this function. Okay? So it's equals exp, and then just type the number. Say, 2 e squared or equals exp to the first power just e which is 2.71 okay that's easy enough next is the square root which we all know and we've all used is just this guy so you type equals so let me first write that so equals sqrt and whatever number you want to take the square root of you put in there so the square root of 9 we know is 3 and that's what we get Equal, equals sqrt of 225 and I think that pretty sure that is 15 and there it is okay and I'll even take a square root of a number that's not going to come out to a integer it'll give you the decimal results okay Next, the logarithm function. Okay, this function lets you take the log of any number. So let's take the log of 100 and also be able to define the base. So usually we either take the natural log or a base 10. If you leave this blank, this function will take the log base 10 of the number that you put first. So this is the number you want to take the log of and this second number is the base and if you are unfamiliar with what that is 
don't worry too much about it. In your courses, you're either take, your professor will either tell you you're taking the natural log or the base 10 log and leave it at that. They won't stress that too much. So you can actually leave this blank and it will take the, the tenth, the uh, base of 10. So what does that mean? Just a quick little recap of math. So if you take the log base 10 of 100, we get two. So that means that the base, which was 10 squared from here, gets us back to the 100. And then the log of 100 with base, and usually we write our bases down here, base 10 equals 2. And that's what we got here with that function. Okay? Next, ln, which is the natural log, right? So this takes it with the base e, which we talked about up here. Right? So we just type equals ln and the number we want to take the natural log of. Let's say we want to take the natural log of this number. Guess what? We get back to 2. Remember this number, we raised e to the second power. And then when we take the natural log of this result, we get back to what we raised e to. So in other words, to write it out mathematically, the natural log of some number, let's say e squared, which is what we did, which is this guy, right? Seven. This e squared equals 7.38 equals 2. The natural log of e cubed equals 3. Basically, this undoes this. ln undoes e. And likewise, e undoes ln. Okay? They reciprocate each other, to use a more technical term. Okay? But the way you type it in Excel is equals ln, like I've written up here, and then the number you want to take the log, natural log of. Next, factorial. That's this guy. If you remember this exclamation point. So if we say 5 factorial, it means 5 times 3 times, I mean 5 times 4 times 3 times 2. It's a times, times 1, right? Uh, 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, right? So the way you do that is factor equals factorial 5 uh, actually equals fact 5, sorry. So equals fact 5 is 120 equals fact 3, we expect 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6, and that's what we get. And this becomes very useful when you have big numbers. Equals factorial fact, sorry, 100. Wow, that's a huge number. 9.33 times 10 to the 157th power. Okay, next, least common multiple, LCM, right? Least common multiple. So this function, built in in Excel, will get the least common multiple of a group of numbers that you define. So let's just make up numbers. 15, 6, and 3. So let's think. What's the least common multiple between these three numbers? Well, we could type equals LCM. And if we just glance at it, I think 30 is going to be our least common multiple because 15 goes into 30, 6 goes into 30, and 3 goes into 30. And there's no number lower than 30 that all three of them go into. And so we type equals least common multiple. And then we highlight the numbers that we want to take the least common multiple of. Just like that. And we get 30, as expected. Right? Now if we wanted the least common multiple of just 6 and 3, we know that's going to be 6. 
we can just highlight those two. Okay? Next, pi. And pi we know is just the number 3.14. Well, sometimes it's, you, you know, it's not just 3.14, it's 3.14 on and on and on and on and on. And that might affect your calculations. So you don't want to just type uh, 3.14, you know, in your calculation. You want the exact number. Well, you don't have to go and type the entire thing. You just type equals pi, open and close the parentheses, and hit enter. And it will give you a higher precision of that number. Okay? That's useful. That comes up. And lastly, certainly not leastly, because there are more functions, trigonometric functions, which I'll do a video of, um, and other fun ways of combining all this stuff, which is quite useful. But I think this is the nice. This gives you a nice foundation of getting into doing most of your calculations in a much more organized way on the Excel as opposed to the, your tiny little screen on your calculator. That is, of course, if your professor or if you yourself have the desire to do so. So combination, combination. This you'll know what I'm talking about if you've taken or if taken probability. So let's say. Uh, you have a group of five people and you want to see how many subgroups of two people you can make. So you have five people and you want to make subgroups of two people of coming from this original five, right? Well, how many groups can we make? Well, there's, let's say, A, B, C, D, and E. That's the original five people, right? So we can have A, B, we can have A, C, a, D, and A, E. Those can be four groups. So let's number these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And, and we'll number more if we have, if we need to. So, <coughs> so A, B, A, C, A, D, A, E. Then B and C can be in a group, in a subgroup. B and D can be in a subgroup. And B and E can be in a subgroup. Then C and D can be a sub, another group. C and E. And finally, D and E. Right? There's no other group that we can make. So then we can just count this and we see that we have 10 groups. Well, this is easy when there's only five uh, total people and two, and you want to make groups of two. But how about if you had 500 here and you want to make groups of 20? Well, this can become a huge, huge uh, uh, problem. Take you days to, to write out all the combinations. So let's, so we use the combination uh, function, and you've also had have the function in uh, in closed form uh, that you can do with your calculator. But this function does it for you. Equals combin. The first number you want to put in is the 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 group size, the big group, the total number, comma the subgroups you want to make. 5 comma 2. So it's red 5 choose 2. Right? You're starting with 5 people. You want to see how many groups of 2 you can make. And we get 10. Right? Which is exactly what we got here. We got 10 groups. Right? And, and we actually enumerated all of them. And that corresponds with that. Now that's great. Now let's just see that for a bigger problem. Combin 500 and groups of 20. Wow. 2.66 times 10 to the 35th. So you would have had to spend a few weeks, maybe months, to enumerate all the co possible combinations. That's if you could somehow come up with a system to keep track, right? And Excel does that for you in a, a, a quick second, okay? Anyway, I hope these were useful. I know these are uh, not all of the functions, but this is the basis for developing some comfort in Excel so that you can do your calculations and then you could start expanding from here. Be sure to check out my other videos. I got almost a hundred videos on Microsoft Excel, Access, PowerPoint, Stats, Math, R, and other fun videos to watch on computer tricks. Subscribe to my channel and click on these ads that come up on the side of these videos. That's what keeps these videos coming to you for free. Till next time, have a great day.